Hey folks, welcome to the channel, The Agnostic Philosopher. That's me. I'm Don. I don't take a dogmatic stance on things other than I can say an argument makes sense to me or it doesn't. And I look at the form of an argument. It could be in uh, cosmology. It could be in biology. It could be in psychology. It could be in theology. It could be anywhere. It could be atheistic. Theistic doesn't matter. I look at the premises. And I just say what parts of the argument uh, make sense and what works for me as well as other, you know, ancillary comments that I may pick up on, like the way in which the person stands in their opinions and so on. A YouTube recommended this one to me, Richard Dawkins. I guess he's doing an interview with somebody. Why most life on Earth is still simple. Okay, here we go. When it comes to life... Uh, there is, well, it seems to me an obvious trend, at least in the early, uh, the early part of the development of life, that most life grew more and more complex with time. Uh, and it's tempting to think that complexity is therefore inevitable. You will always get um, living organisms, organisms to be more and more complex. And it's especially um, enticing to think that way if you've seen, and I know you've seen, I don't know if members of the audience have seen, the complex patterns that a computer uh, can produce following only the very, very simplest instructions for how to color a piece of graph paper going from one line to the next. Mm -hmm. Just really simple things like, you know, if there's black up here, put black below it, or if there's white up there, you know, do something else. Yeah. And line after line after line after line, and you get these immensely ornate, complex patterns. That seems like complexity is just something that grows out of, you yes. know. So, so is the trend towards greater complexity in the evolutionary, in the evolution of living systems inevitable? I think that might be a bit misleading. Um, Good. All that's really happening is improved vehicles for survival. Survival. No and... Um, this is going to be uh, governed by natural selection in, in what I've called arms races, what other people call arms races. Um, an arms race between a predator and prey, for example, um, each improvement on one side of the arms race, say the, the prey side, they run faster. So the predators yep. have to run faster. And then the predators run faster, so the prey have to run faster. There are arms races between predators and prey, between parasites and hosts, wherever the threat to the animal's survival comes from entities which are themselves evolving, then you will tend to get a trend towards increasing something or other. And complexity is a pretty likely candidate for that. So um, complexity of the nervous system, complexity of behavior, complexity of the uh, responses of the of the prey animal to the predator or the prey to, or the predator <clears throat> to, the, to the prey it's entirely plausible that when there are arms races you will get um, increasing running speed s sensory uh, acuity and probably complexity as well I think why he's delivering this in a different way and trying to explain it is that it depends on how you define complexity. When you, if you define complexity within a whole system, one's ability to run faster doesn't make the system more complex because then where this one gains, another one falls off. So is it a zero sum game? We don't know, but that's where you look at, well, what's the benefit to the individual horse that can run faster? Well, if the female horses can run faster and the males can't, then that decreases their chances of, chances of survival because the, if the females don't want to mate, the males can't mate with them because they can't catch them. Uh, and that, that's a basic example, but you understand the point that, and he's making this point, not as detailed as I did, but an advantage to one is a disadvantage to another, so it's a zero-sum game whether you're predator or prey, if you're the predator and you're stronger or faster, like some adaptation makes you stronger or faster, are you more complex, possibly? And then it gets into how do you define complexity? Is it only based within that individual being 
then is something more complex because it works towards survival and it just takes more words to describe what's going on with that individual or within a whole system does complexity have to be defined as measured against an entire system the biosphere of earth for example and the results and the consequences of one organism becoming faster or stronger or another becoming slower or if the prey become faster and stronger does that make them more complex does it make the system more complex but when she used the word complexity or complex in the beginning i said this is going to be a problem because that word complexity just doesn't really admit of a great definition but remember that the great majority of living organisms are actually bacteria um and uh, 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 i mean they're complex yeah. enough and they're not complex by our standards um right when you when we uh perhaps moving to your subject carolyn if we, if we speculate about um the hope of discovering extraterrestrial life that communicates with us that's got to be complex and so we have a natural interest in complex life intelligent life life with advanced computational faculties but it doesn't seem to me to be an inevitable expectation of evolution that 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 will be the the main um factor that increases anything in an arms race that improves the survival relative to the other side in the arms race will be favored and of course quite a lot of evolution nothing to do with arms races when it's just responding to changes in the climate ice ages and droughts and things like that that doesn't involve complexity that involves whatever is required to survive in the new conditions whether it's a drought or an ice age you may if it's an ice age you get yeah. develop more body hair when it when the ice age finishes you lose your body hair that's not complexity um that's responding to the environment wherever there are arms races i think you would, complexity is one of the things you would expect to find there's also perhaps a kind of one way valve that um if you wait long enough in evolution anything you expect may happen and and um the sort of complexity that we have in in intelligence and language it's only happened once and it only arrived in the last half million years or so um so uh it 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 may take a long time for something like that to appear i think you know my an analogy i would use to sort of capture what he was just saying about predator and prey the complexity would arise let's say basketball we'll use sports analogy and two guys are playing one on one uh or we could even use it as a team and they play each other all the time all the time and the offense when you're trying to score the basket your opposition is going to develop better defensive tactics to stop you but you're going to develop better offensive tactics to put the ball in the hoop and so will the offenses and defenses become more complex yeah well yeah they will over time there's going to be more things that you have to integrate into your game to get to the basket but then the defense is going to have to respond So I think in terms of predator and prey there would be greater complexity in within that that system but he is saying that bacteria uh, comprise the bulk of planet earth every cell in our body basically human beings and all living creatures are hosts to bacteria every human being within about 2 days of his or her life has roughly 10 bacteria on every cell in the body now, on the eyes internally externally and that is basically from your mother and father and uh so when you see sometimes in life when you see uh you might get like a zit on your face or you might have some kind of blemish somewhere that you didn't have before and it crops up and you think oh well that's my body fighting an infection well what it actually might be and it's more likely it is is that you the bacteria 
in your body is partial to that bacteria. When an invading bacteria winds up getting into your system in some way, the bacteria in your body, it's not just the healthy cells, the leukocytes and white blood cells and all this that are, are doing it, the work that they do, but the bacteria in your body are attacking the other bacteria that it finds hostile to its environment, its survival. So bacteria themselves are prevalent, and but as he said, relative to us, they're not complex. But as Einstein said, everything's relative. And uh, your frame of reference, and that's why complexity is only relative to our frame of reference. And in a small system, you could see things growing in complexity. But the question is, is it an advantage or disadvantage to the survivor or survivability of the entire ecosystem? And, uh, and the answer is probably no. Is that a zero-sum game? These are big questions. And uh, in the snippet we saw here, we didn't get into that. So, all right, guys, I love looking at stuff like this. It, it comes back at some point in life in some other discussion with someone else or video, but just an awareness of how things work, maybe how they don't, and just sort of what to be aware of to look into whenever it's necessary or desirable. So leave your suggestions, folks. I read them. Leave your comments. I read them, too. And please subscribe. Have a great day. I'll see you on another video. Keep thinking philosophically.